All right, the time is now. You should be able to go to the link in the description and download the latest version of Zorn OS 16, whether if you're going to just download the free version or if you want to spend the 40 bucks and get the paid pro version. The download is available, so go ahead, pause this video real quick, open up a new tab, start the download, and while it downloads, come back and let's talk about what is new. Um, I'm patient. I can wait. All right, so your download should have <laughs> your download should have started. So basically, in this video, what we're gonna do is go ahead and quickly run through all the new changes. We kind of did this going over the beta release. So if you want to see that, it's more of a uh, in-depth overview of that beta release. You could watch that video. And uh, if you are curious and if you are wondering between the core and pro version, about a week ago, I uploaded a video comparing the two editions, so you can see what is best for you. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and actually jump onto this uh, release of Zorn OS and check out some of the changes. So first, starting off, we have the tour. This is a new edition. Let's go ahead and start the tour here. Uh, basically runs through just everything you need to know to kind of get started in your system. So we have the open menu to launch apps, okay. Uh, choose your desktop with a Zorn appearance and as an option to go ahead and launch that. So we're gonna go next. We can speed up our virtual machine. So I am running in a VM right now and it knows this. So it's gonna give me the option to install those guest edition drivers. So I'm actually gonna click on that and go ahead and install those so you can kind of see how easy this is. Type in the password and then it's gonna begin doing that. So while it does that, we could go ahead and go next. We have the option to connect to various online accounts, whether you do Google, Nextcloud, Microsoft, uh, whatever you want. So go next and they have the Zorn Connect. Now Zorn Connect is awesome. You just get an application on your cell phone and then you can use uh, the application to transfer photos, to see text messages, all that stuff. It's, it's a pretty cool thing. And then we have use software to find and install apps. We can see the icon, the button's down there. Pretty self-explanatory. We go next here. This is a nice little feature. We could go ahead and select what Office Suite is installed out of the gate. So LibreOffice comes with it, but you could switch to only Office with a single click. Then next, and it says that's it. You can visit the help page if you need more help, but we could go ahead and close this out. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do real quick is actually update the system, get those VirtualBox drivers installed, and reboot into it so we could get better re resolutions, better performance, and all that jazz. All right, so now we're booted back into the system, and if you were somebody who used Zorn OS 16, one thing you're really gonna notice that's different is the theming and just overall for the UI, the improvements are immaculate. It is a beautiful system. Uh, everything is crisper, it's easier on the eyes. It's, it's just a good looking system overall. And speaking of appearance, to go ahead and get into our Zorn appearance, we could just click a uh, pretty easy to access shortcut here. And then we have all of our layouts, our themes, we could switch to a dark theme, or we could go with the uh, dark or light theme, depending on the time of the day. For now, I'm gonna keep it in light. We have our accent color changes, uh, interface stuff, desktop fonts. A big thing in this one is the layouts. Um, I'm not gonna get too deep into the layouts because I covered this a lot in the Zorn um, Core versus Pro video, so I'd recommend you check that out. But some things that are new is the 11 layout, which is this one right here. Uh, this is only available in the Pro version, so you would get that, as well as this uh, Mac OS X layout here. But since a lot of you guys are probably gonna be sticking with the Core version, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the default theme, because even the default theme or the default layout is absolutely beautiful. Now, one thing that's really nice is wallpapers. You can see this uh, mountain wallpaper back here. This is a dynamic wallpaper. So if I just go right click and I do change background, you can see right now this one is selected with that dynamic feature that will change the actual background depending on the time of the day. I'm recording this the evening before launch, so it's more of the evening layout, but this is what it would look like during the middle of the day, for example. So it's really nice that this changes during the duration of the day. And another thing that's new is if I go ahead and actually log out here, or let's just lock it, because this is something that's new too, is the background of your lock screen is just a very blurred version of your background. So that's something that's new. Go ahead and type in our password and we are back into our system. Now the next change is a little bit more difficult to show, but overall going from 15 to 16, the performance is gonna be a lot faster and smoother. 
Uh, the one thing that we did test was the RAM consumption. The new version actually uses about 100 megabytes less of RAM on boot. But overall, there has been optimization changes, whether that's in the desktop environment, the kernel. Overall, you'll notice going from 15 to 16 that apps will open faster, animations are smoother, and loading times are reduced. Now, one thing you'll notice out of the gate is they now have the catalogs from FlatHub, the Snap Snore, and the Ubuntu and Zorn APT repositories. So overall, there is a lot of different applications to go ahead and choose from. This right here is our software center. If I go, okay, let's get started. And let's go ahead and search something up. Let's say we wanted a Krita, for example. Go ahead and grab that and you can see it's already installed because this is the pro version. If you have the core version, you can just go ahead and install it. But if I do open this up, you can see the source right here. This is installed by default from the Flat Hub repositories. If I wanted to, I could change this to the Zorn package, but flat packs are a great default. And another popular application that I use every day, for example, is GIMP. I'm, this one's already going to be installed as well. The, GIMP is pre-installed in both the core and the pro version. And here we have the source. The default is the Zorn OS repository, but I could also change this to the FlatHub repository if I wanted to. So overall, there are more options when it comes to your application selection and there are more applications overall because of these changes. Now, one thing that's kind of a big deal, especially if you're somebody who's new coming over from Windows to Linux, is sideloading Windows applications is a lot safer and easier through Zorn. So, the, and you're not gonna be able to do things like uh, the whole Adobe Creative Suite and things like that, but simple EXEs you could actually go ahead and install pretty easy. I know there's already a Zoom Linux package, but just to kind of demonstrate, I'm gonna go ahead and download this. There we go, so let's go ahead and save this. Hit okay, and you can see right there it's done. If we go ahead and open up our files, you can see we have the Zoom Installer EXE. So let's go double click on this, and then we get this. It just gives you a little bit of a warning about Windows applications. So you can install Windows app support or just install Zoom. It will recognize an optimized Windows installer, whether that be through like Lutris or Steam if you're trying to download any games, etc. So if we just go ahead and hit install Zoom, you can see it gives us a Zoom through the store. So for somebody coming in and downloading Windows EXEs, it will be kind of helpful that it will at least send them into the right direction. Now, just as an example, I went ahead and just downloaded C Cleaner, which is a popular Windows utility. And I'm going to see what happens when I go ahead and try to open this up. So it says Stacer can be installed from software. So it, uh, it says Stacer is an alternative to C Cleaner. So it gives you alternatives when you go ahead and try to install various Windows applications. So for example, I could just go ahead and hit install Stacer, and then it will go ahead and open up Stacer in the native Linux repositories. That right there is a cool feature, and I could always skip this. So if I go ahead and just do install Windows app support, it's gonna go ahead and try to actually install CCleaner. Watch, no surprise, it's a Windows application. Well, it's made specifically for Windows, it didn't actually work. And if I try to do the same thing with Zoom, let's go ahead and see if it actually works or not. And problem cannot be resolved. The following dependencies. So it depends on Wine32 virtual package. So if I actually went and installed Wine, it would probably actually go ahead and install, but uh, it's always better to use just the native Windows or native Linux applications over installing, trying to install EXEs. But that's just something that's very helpful to people who initially go out and try to get those Windows programs that are not used to using Linux repositories. We talked about this, we can't really demonstrate it, but they have a very simple uh, sound recorder application that you could go ahead and grab if you would like, well, you already have it, but you could go ahead and use it if you would like to. And another thing that's really cool when it comes to the uh, customization of the system is this taskbar right here. It's fairly customizable. If we go over to taskbar settings, we can see we can change the size, we can in, uh, enable IntelliJ-Hide or IntelliHide. So if I go ahead and move this down here, for example, it's going to hide it. I can bring it up here and you can see it kind of looks like the dock when I actually enable that. So if you do want that kind of Mac OS X style dock, you could get it through the default, even though it's not as optimized as their pro layouts. Uh, we can override background transparency. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and enable that. You can see I made it uh, very transparent, so you could go ahead and change that as you see fit, whether if you want it completely solid or you just want some floating icons on the bottom for some reason. But I'm gonna go ahead and disable that, disable that, 
Obviously, you could go in and change your panel size if you can't see things, you can make it huge. Or if you have a very low resolution PC, you can go ahead and make it pretty small. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on 48. Uh, you have positions, so you can change the positions of anything on the dock as well as changing the actual position of the panel itself. Under behavior, you can change some of these things such as what it actually shows. So if you had a second monitor, you could isolate it for various settings on different monitors, things like that. And then you have general action controls. So that's just another new addition when it comes to making it very customizable. Now, one thing I haven't really talked about too much, let's go ahead and jump back into Zorn appearance here. And if we actually go over to these interface settings, we have jelly mode here. Now, if you're at all familiar with like the old school compass style effects, this is what's going on here. So you could go ahead and enable that out of the gate. And that's just me covering uh, some of the major things that have been changed. There really is a lot going on. I'll go ahead and link down to the release notes so you could go ahead and read all of those, as well as the downloads. So you could actually download uh, Zorn Core and try it out right now for free or the pro version if you would like to. Uh, additionally, something I'm not gonna show because I don't really have the touchpad is they have really nice touch gestures now. And jumping back onto our system again really fast here, um, this is one layout, but if you're used to using uh, just regular GNOME, for example, you have that option as well. So now we are in our traditional GNOME desktop because this is running on top of GNOME. And for those of you who do not know, I'm not sure if NeoFetch, yeah, so let's install this real quick. There we go. Zorn OS 16 is going to be running the 5.11 kernel out of the gate with Bash. The desktop environment, as we just said, is GNOME. The default package count is 2020 with 50 uh, Smack flat packages currently installed. And it is using the Zorn Blue, Zorn Blue, and Zorn Blue theme set out of the gate. So that was my third and final video on Zorn for quite a while, uh, unless if something major happens. Um, we're, we're probably going to give Zorn a break for a little bit because overall the reason why I've been covering it so much is it is a fantastic Linux distribution and honestly if you're going to be recommending Linux to somebody it's one of those that you really ought to recommend. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is one thing I really ought to bring up and that is Zorn Grid. This is something that's coming soon that I am I'm pretty excited for. Personally I'm probably not going to be using it but when it comes to integrating Linux into companies, schools, and things like that, this is something I'm excited for. Uh, Zorn Grid is going to be a control suite to go ahead and manage large groups of computers. So here in this little preview, we can this is uh, for illustration purposes only, but you can see the installed updates on the computers. You can see all the computers running on a specific instance automated updates, patches, current activities, the actual computers, the software on the computer. You can monitor the computers. You can execute commands on various computers. You can manage all the computers, well, all the Zorn machines on a specific network through Zorn Grid. So I overall am just really excited about how this is gonna develop and what this is going to turn into going forward. Uh, one, particularly, I can really see this being used in schools because primarily in like uh, elementary, middle, high schools, that they're not really, unless if you're in like a video production class, and in that case, they're gonna have IMAX anyways. Um, the, the students who use like the Windows machines aren't using anything that couldn't be done in Linux. So they're doing web browser stuff, word processing, things that something like Zorn Grid here would be absolutely perfect for managing especially if they can use a zorn grid to do like uh, network filters such as uh, blocking certain websites at schools and things like that overall this is something i i'm excited i'm really excited to see uh progress so with all of that said i do hope you enjoyed this video of me covering zorn again the links are going to be down in the description and with all that said, I would like to thank my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Uh, Mitchell Valentino is currently our highest tier Patreon supporter. He is an executive. I thank you so much for your support. Additionally, we have three producers. We have Timo, Anthony, Phil Mack, Kyle. Thank you guys so much for being producer level supporters. It means a lot to me. And thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. 
Your guys' support means the world to me. Thank you so much. Uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon or YouTube member, links down below. You get some uh, perks, benefits. If you do it through YouTube, you get emojis and things like that. But if you can't do that or you just don't want to, a simple subscribe and ringing that bell so you do not miss any future uploads is more than good enough for me. And with all that said, I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Uh, have fun. Take it easy. I'll see you guys later.